So the balance blade is a very interesting weapon. In 1.0, it had the the basic premise of it just fast strikes and then it goes fast. I wanted to kind of take a look at the fast strikes, but also the new additions to it. So that's mostly talking about how now after 10 strikes, you get uh, a critical hit and the critical hits are in rapid succession. So what you end up doing is you will end up uh, getting a lot of like big damage on it. Like the crit isn't that much, but the, um, so the crits aren't much, but it's fast. So they come quickly. So think of it like a poor, per a poor man's assassin's dagger, except you can hit in the front or the back. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, I have pretty much everything for skills with uh, brutality unlocked. I have the Hukuto's bow unlocked. And I'm going to be using the Hukuto's Bowl the entire way through. Uh, I'm just going to be changing it up a few times. Uh, I have the Frontline Shield unlocked because uh, I wanted to see if it would work. Um, it does pair very nicely because what the uh, Frontline Shield does is the parry is uh, five times more if you have recently hit the opponent with a contact move. So I think that's within the last five seconds. It, it either doubles or it's five times. I can't exactly remember, but I don't end up using the Frontline Shield. Uh, I'm not much of a parry type of person, so, um, but yeah, so that's basically what we're working with today, and I'm pretty excited for this one. So, there's going to be some issues, so the main issue, what I'm working with, is that the balance blade isn't actually that strong, so you, get, you have to pretty much get, like, these hits off in rapid succession. Especially once you start getting a crit, but I will say it is a fantastic weapon against bosses. Especially with the right synergies. And it's easy to get synergy on melee weapons because of simply because of open wounds and and the melee mutation. So you can get 25% uh, to uh, slow down targets. You can also get 30% to burn. You can get 100% uh, to poison. And then you can also get 60% um, to bleed. And with open wounds, you end up getting a really, really powerful weapon. It takes a little bit of time for the crits to get going, but because boss battles are uh, fairly long, you'll be able to uh, get them off very, very, very quickly. So that's basically what's going to happen in this run. Um, as far as um, the biomes in which it's uh, better in, uh, so some bi some weapons are better in certain biomes than others. I would say for Balance Blade, it's you know it's kind of in the name, so. It's, it, I would say it's pretty balanced all the way around um, because there, you're not relying on anything. You're not relying on any sort of gimmicks with this. You're relying more on just uh, placement and then um, getting some damage off quickly. So right there, I use the kudos bow and the fire grenade, and then I start getting the crits, and that's how I end up getting the kill. Uh, light speed uh, does a lot for me in the beginning portion of this uh, of this run because it gets me out of uh, tight situations. I really need to do a run uh, specialized on the uh, light speed. And what I might do is I could actually end up doing the same exact run but uh, using light speed all the way because I do get rid of it at some point. But I do like light speed, especially paired with Hakuto's bow and a fast melee weapon like this or even something like Hayabusa gauntlets. I think I might do that instead. I might use the Hayabusa gauntlets with the light speed on one of my next runs. But yeah, it's a it's an extremely fun run. Uh, very, very fast because that's just the nature of this weapon. And it's such a stark contrast from my last run, the Pyrotechnics, which took like an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, you'll see the time when I'm done with this. It actually ends up being my fastest run ever on 5BC. Uh, so I'm gonna hit up the Toxic Sewers. I've been going to Caverns a lot lately, so I'm gonna take a break from that. Um, but I am gonna hit up the you know, the typical route, uh, you know, go to uh, Corrupted Prison and then uh, hit up Ramparts after that. Um, I don't feel like fighting Conjectivious just because I've been doing that way too much lately. And uh, we start off with Open Wounds. Uh, right now, I don't have the Bleed Synergy, but I'll be looking for 60% to Bleed at some point. Right now, I have a really good Affix and Toxic uh, Hits for every hit, or Toxic Cloud for every hit. Uh, but I don't have 100% to Poison, so if I had that, then I would have probably kept this for the entire run. But I currently don't, and that's fine. Because, especially paired with the Kudos Bow, um, 
I'll be able to uh, get get off kills very, very, very quick. So the buzz cutters will be a bit of an issue to start out with, but uh, they won't be too bad after that. And the reason I say that is because I have a lot of bombs on me. So what that means is that I can essentially um, use my uh, fire grenade to uh, fire off on them. And then uh, because they're up in the air, I can just fire off in the air randomly and then it's going to hit them. Because the thing about grenades that's nice is that they have an area of effect. It's not really noted in the like uh, like via like any sort of like graphics, but um, it's very noticeable. And yeah, Lightspeed is doing a lot of work for me right now. And I take that um, Hakuto's bow because it's uh, it pierces and it's plus two red and there's no real drawbacks from it. Uh, one issue is that I currently do have biters, but the biters aren't that big of an issue for me at the moment. I will say that while this is a phenomenal weapon against bosses, um, it is very, very uh, iffy in biomes because it, ne it necessitates that you have to be going fast to get the crits and with the mobs it's not necessarily the best. It, it's the same problem with mobs that it, it, that it has, that any melee weapon has, but um, the worst part is that uh, the crits are hard to come by because you have to be moving fast and then for certain open areas you're not going to be uh, getting those hits off. Uh, the crits off, I mean. And so that's something I'm going to have to keep in mind. Uh, so one mutation I am going to take is the melee mutation because it'll uh, give me a little bit more free reign as to like, you know, how to hit and things like that. But uh, the run's going okay so far. Um, I haven't been hit yet. That's obviously going to change. And um, the damage is quick. Hukuto's bow is doing a really good job. Um, I should have taken that um, one uh, flame turret because it had toxic synergy, but I will end up forgetting to take it. But my weapons right now are fine. My weapons and skill are okay. And uh, Lightspeed also does a really good job with that, that particular ability, because what that ability ends up doing sometimes is you get caught up in there and you can end up uh, getting hurt as a result. So, and that can break up your 60 or kill you when you're on curse and th just general things like that. So it's nice to just have like, in a, like an escape button. So Lightspeed does a really good job of that. Like just getting you behind enemies. It works pretty well with like, uh, especially melee weapons. It's a much better brutality um, af um, skill than uh, tactics, I feel, but it does well in tactics. So the problem with phaser and this weapon is that you don't necessarily get um, much added damage. Even like a plus, even like a level 12 phaser with like all these cool affixes to it, like it doesn't really do much in terms of just like trying to, um, okay, I was wondering why that, uh, buzz cutter wasn't killed. The biters actually messed it up, but, and it didn't kill when it was supposed to kill. So that's what happened. That's why I was confused for a second. But a yeah, phaser doesn't work well with this build because the damage isn't is already kind of low for this weapon and it relies on you getting fast hits. So it, again, this weapon is great versus bosses. It's not great versus everything else. So yeah, Lightspeed got me out of that situation. It, it generally does a good job of just getting you out of precarious situations. I really like it. I didn't like it at first, but um, I was still learning how to use it, I feel.
And I am going to try to get rid of uh, the biters at some point. But I do have um, good affixes on this besides the biters. And I get the double rampager, which isn't that bad. As long as I jump, I should be okay. And that's exactly what I did there. And uh, I forgot that the uh, that the scorpion was actually shooting at that time, so I ended up taking my first hit. Unfortunate circumstances, but that happens. Yeah, the buzz cutters can be such a pain because, um, like their their flying pattern is just so bizarre, and I have such a hard time with it sometimes. And so I'm hoping to do more recordings over the next uh, week or so because school just got out, and I'm just kind of waiting until my flight back home, which is next week. So I'll, I'll have significantly more time to do things. So hopefully I can get some good runs. And I have a couple of recordings that are waiting. Um, like I've, I've completely recorded all the footage. I just need to actually do the commentary. I don't know if I'll do them or not because they weren't like amazing runs. Um, and, tip, and like I wouldn't say my runs are amazing or anything like that. But I do like, a, I try to put runs that are interesting. And this one's definitely interesting. Or like if I want to showcase a weapon. Like one of the ones I have right now is um, the Fire Blast. And I wanted to do a Fire Blast recording at 1.4, but I never got around to it. And it was bad because I had the recording done. I had the commentary done, but I just got lazy with the editing. And then 1.5 came out and then I just didn't do it. Same thing with the double War Javelin run. And like, yeah, you can do War Javelin runs in 1.5. It's just... It's significantly harder now because bosses got that uh, big buff of skipping the first phase, so bosses aren't as easy anymore. Which is funny because I feel like Giant has gotten... Maybe maybe I just got better against Giant, but I got worse against Timekeeper for sure. <laughs> but I actually think the, uh, the change for uh, bosses skipping the first phase, it really affected the Timekeeper the most because... Uh, Timekeeper, you could, with the stronger builds, you could kill her with, like, before she even got to that second phase. But now she's on the second phase, so that really um, messes you up. And she's throwing the shurikens really fast, even, like, on the so-called first phase now, which is actually the second phase. So there's, so she's significantly harder. She, what I say, is the hardest boss right now, because... If, unless you're on survival, you're going to get hit. Or, well, I should actually crack that. Unless you have a shield, you're going to get hit. And that makes it really, really difficult. I would say that the curse in Corrupted Confinement is significantly harder than the curse in um, than the curse in Prison Depths for one reason only, and that's the Inquisitors. Inquisitors make everything so much harder because it's easy to aggro enemies with um, 
with prison depths because all they have to deal with is is the um whatchamacallit is the knife throwers and then you can aggro the knife throwers easily you can aggro you can manipulate enemies here you can't really manipulate enemies because um bombers will aggro you and jump and yeah okay slammers can be weird sometimes you can roll but your rolling has to be precise like i get here hit here too Yeah, like, if you don't roll properly, then you're getting hit. And luckily, like, I had enough health where I didn't get hit that much. So that was, that was a bit unfortunate, but we're still going on the run, so we're okay. But yeah, as I was saying, like, with Corrupt to Confinement, that curse is harder because now what you have to deal with are Inquisitors which are really difficult. Grenadiers aren't bad, but then they're, it's two solitary enemies. So it's two enemies that don't um, aggro you, but they can shoot from God knows where. Uh, well, Grenadiers is more obvious, but Inquisitors are the worst. So uh, they, can be, they can be a pain sometimes, especially if you're not paying attention. And I am gonna take that uh, Cleaver it is going to give me minus one in brutality, but I'm I'm okay with that. So I can, I'm getting the crits right now, which is really nice. And I'm going to try to ensure that I always get crits. And I'm going to do this through a variety of ways. But I kind of get uh, screwed a little bit right here. That actually does more damage than uh, it seems. I know like I'm somewhat low on health, but um, that vertical laser, I think once in tactics, it brought me down by like 40% or something like that. Like it was a lot. But we're at the end of the level. Uh, we had a shaky last few minutes uh, with getting hit by the slammers and then the vertical laser and then the end of Toxic Sewer was just messy. So hopefully we can do a little bit better. So it's going to be the same problem as we had in uh, Toxic Sewers, which is the uh, buzz cutters are going to be once again an issue. And Inquisitors are also there. So sweepers aren't going to be that bad. Um, I've kind of more or less figured out how to deal with them since 1.4, which is essentially uh, kill all the other enemies on the on the platform and then and then go and then uh, aggro the sweeper to where you have the advantage. And that's the advantage to having bombs, is that I, I was able to kill those four uh, buzz cutters, and then the last one died to the toxic cloud that my um, that one of my weapons is doing. I don't know which one it is, <laughs> honestly. I think it might be the bounce play that's doing it.
Cannibals are a bit bulky, so they can be hard to deal with. Um, but the biters are definitely helping here. I don't say that often. Biters are usually a pain, but there aren't enemies that I'm scared of aggroing that much. So it's not that bad right now. The worst case scenario is that they aggro the buzz cutters, but it's honestly not a big deal. And now I'm getting the crits. But the crits wear off pretty quickly. That's the one, that's like the one issue. So now I need to do a little bit of malaise management because I'm at uh, three and you don't want to get up to like five because then uh, one bad platform and then you end up taking a lot of hits. And I don't have anything for malaise uh, management either like no mutations like berserker or uh, things like that soldier resistance is the other one And I guess I never took that cleaver from uh, Corrupt to Confinement, but I, I do take it here. Because I, I remember I had it against uh, Conjectivious. Uh, but we did get that 60, so that was also nice. And then I completely whiffed on the uh, bomb. This run would be a little bit easy. I don't know if it would have been easier with the shield. If I used Frontline Shield, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't have been. Because Kudos Ball also is doing a lot of damage for me right now. I would say more than anything, Dark Trackers are actually the easiest enemy in the game because they're one, they're super fragile, and and two, their attack is super slow. And uh, you may have noticed that I picked up Velocity. So the reason I did that is because of the crits that I can get in this level. Um, I can move faster. And so, because the crits wear off quickly, I can pretty much go through an entire section of a biome while getting crits. And that will help out a lot. Velocity is not just for speed runs. And uh, I believe I get hit here. Yeah. Yeah, Inquisitors are... Ooh. It's not just that they do damage. It's that they... You have to avoid them, and then you end up getting hit by other enemies. That's most of the time when I get hit by Inquisitors. Getting hit by other enemies. Also, I like Velocity with um, with melee builds because, okay, so say for example with stu stuff, stuff like uh, Swift Sword, the speed that you get from killing a bunch of enemies at once is only about 5 seconds, but you get 15 seconds of speed with uh, the Swift Sword. So you get, the chances for crits are a lot more, I feel. So, and plus there's the Adrenaline Mutation. Or is it? No, it's Frenzy, excuse me. The Frenzy mutation. And so what that does is that um, if you get a speed buff, then you start healing. And so that's incredibly helpful.
What's really nice about the balance blade is that you shoot the Hakuto's bow and then you can uh, start hitting immediately. Like there's no wind up or anything. It's extremely fast. And that's, I take the cleaver 100% um, to poison and uh, creates a toxic cloud. That's easy synergy. And Velocity also helped me get out of that situation too. Because if I was running at normal speed, then I would have uh, gotten hit by that uh, Rampager, most likely. And that's the last elite right there. And there we go. And I almost fell down. <laughs> but no. I don't know why the buzz cutters do that. Like I wish they just went straight towards you because when they hang around like that, it just becomes incredibly hard to deal with. Same with the bombers. I wish their attack pattern was more consistent because sometimes they'll stay up in the air, sometimes they won't. And uh, that becomes really, really difficult to assess. And now uh, we have four more enemies. It's a little section. I didn't really know where it was, but yeah, it was locked in that corner somewhere. And we're gonna go fight the uh, conject, not conjectivius. Have I been saying that this whole time? I meant concierge. I think I've been saying conjectivius this whole time because I've been I, I mixed the two up a lot. Plus, I've been um, fighting conjectivius a lot more lately. And with Concierge, um, melee builds can be a bit difficult sometimes unless you have like proper skills. Because one of the issues is that they, how do I say this, they tend to not exactly work. So, con uh, fuck, I keep saying Conjectivious, Concierge has that aura, right? And you can't really go close. Melee dictates that you need to go close. Um, he also has that little strike thing that he does, and he's a little unpredictable with like when he's going to uh, fire off the aura. Like he takes the steps and stuff like that, but if you don't roll out in time, then it can be a bit of an issue, uh, which is why light speed is fantastic against this. But I do have the appropriate skills to like whittle him down pretty quickly. And with the melee mutation, I should be able to uh, get uh, some good hits off. So Cleaver is actually doing a lot for me right now. I'm just going to keep firing off my skills until uh, he dies. That's actually the, the best thing for me. And there we go. Perfect fight against him. And we can move on to the next biome, which is going to be Stilt.
And so I'm going to reforge to try to get a Toxic Cloud or Trail of Flames and Pierce the Target. Shouldn't be hard to get, but my luck with getting certain affixes was pretty, pretty bad this entire run. So I do get the 50%. 50% is not really good on this weapon. 50% in general is not good because the chances are you're going to get hit. And the chances are you're not going to be able to get certain affixes. And it's just... It, it can be annoying. I, I don't think the 50% thing should be a one of those rare ones. Or it should be a less common rare affix. Because I don't think it really does anything at the end of the day. Most of the time, you're not going to be at 100% health. Like, I am right now, but I'm going to not be by the end of this. I'm going to wait for this uh, bomber to come down. I'm going to smack him, and we're going to go fight that elite right away. After killing these two enemies first. We already have him down to extremely low health, and then I can pull him over here, get the kill. Now we got plus two in red, and that's really good. And I actually messed this up a little bit. I I think the Rampager hit me. Not 100% certain. But I did mess that jump up a little bit. Um, if I had down smashed, then I would have been okay. But I was trying to be a little cute. I should have gone down the ladder first. And that's the really cool thing about Balance Blade, is that it's so fast, and then I was able to get the crits instantly because of that. So this one I was pretty annoyed with. This... Or, wait, was it this one? It was something. It, 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 there is a point in which I got very annoyed in this run. It, it's coming soon. Uh, this one's an easy take for me because the 50% the is not going to last. And um, I would rather have 60% to bleed, which is the first time I'm having that, weirdly enough. I think it's right, I think it's in this one that I got kind of a ridiculous hit. So he takes forever and then I get hit because I have no way of dealing with that. So yeah, that's something I definitely want to see fixed in 1.6 or whatever they decide to do next because that was really annoying. 
because I have no idea like how to even deal with that. That was a very unfortunate mob for me, but uh, luckily for me, I was able to uh, fire off that fire grenade in time. But ultimately, this is, that's going to be what cost me the 60, is that uh, kind of ridiculous hit from the bomber. I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter that much in terms of like what you're going to get, but it, it does become a bit of an issue. Like, if I was cursed, then that would have ended the run. I would have been pretty annoyed at that point if I, if that was what ended the run for me. I think the crit time length should be a bit longer for this weapon. But that's just me. So they made a change in 1.3 that was uh, pretty subtle, but it was a it was a necessary change. Um, what they did was uh, you'll automatically go up on the ledge even if you're closer and you're impervious to damage. And so what that ends up doing sometimes it, it's a double-edged sword because if you're automatically close to a ledge and then you're trying to move, sometimes you'll end up back on the ledge. And it's very hard to describe, but that it happened like a, like a few seconds ago. But normally that's okay, like if you're trying to avoid like Inquisitor shots or something. But in other cases, it becomes a bit of a problem. So I'm gonna end up having 58 kills so I didn't get the 60 because of that bomber. Um, that was very, very unfortunate. And I'm desperately trying to see if there's any possible other enemies. Also, my damage count is a little bit low. The good news is I'm not taking any damage from hits right now. So a bit disappointing, but uh, we got out of there, 93% uh, health, and we're doing okay. So now I'm starting to get the crit, so that's really nice. And me avoiding that hit from the failed experiment is just one of those things with experience because I was able to um, get away from it because I knew pretty much the distance at which he was going to hit me with. So I'm starting to run out of light a little bit, so I need to go f find the light as soon as possible. I, I've got it right there, so no issues. And 
And we're gonna start off with the curse right away. Very, very early in the level. And we're gonna fight our first elite. And it's the box elite, so I just have to make sure I don't drop down, but very, very fast kill. The synergy is really, really nice. And at least three enemies on the map, the two kamikazes and the dark tracker, so I should be able to get to seven by the time I'm out of this uh, room. And just like that, the curse is cleared. So that was pretty nice. And uh, we get the 60 there. And we are going to go to Giant, so I'll end up with the level 12 weapon. So that'll be really, really nice. Well, unless I decide to sell it, of course. It all depends on the synergy on what I get with the weapons. Because 5BC synergy is one of the most important things to have. Whether it's like two weapons that have synergy with each other or like affixes. In this case, it would be affixes. Because Hakuna's Bow works with everything. But, um, like I have open wounds and uh, plus 60% to bleed, so that's already a lot of damage right there. And so the way I assess going to Giant here is whether or not how many uh, whether or not I have a good amount of scroll fragments. So this is only this only applies to Sepulchre. So Giant gives four. Uh, he gives four of the uh, what you call it the uh, scroll fragments. So if I have less than two, then I'll go to Giant because. High Peak Castle only gives one. Otherwise, I'll either fight Giant and then head, o head on down to the um, High Peak Castle, or I'll just go fight. Um, or I'll go fight uh, Timekeeper. Because if I have two or more, then I got an extra scroll in High Peak Castle. So that'll give me three colorless scrolls and two dual stat scrolls. I think once I made that decision, I ended up getting five scrolls, and I almost hit the spikes there, foolishly. And that's what I've been waiting for. So I get finally get to get rid of my level 4 fire grenade that I've had since the first level. I mean, it did amazing work for me, but now I get to finally get rid of it. <laughs> But yeah, if you end up with two, or more, if you end up with um, two or more, then what you can do is that you can go to High Peak Castle, and then you get the you get a lot more scrolls, as opposed to only two when you beat the giant, and then go straight to Hand of the King. And so um, one time, I was either run out of recorded and already posted, or I still have yet to do it. But, um, basically, I went in with a certain amount. I had two scroll fragments uh, going into Hypey Castle. Then I took the two, so that's one. I got a dual stat in red. It was either red or purple, and then that was two. Got the two uh, legendary uh, scrolls, so that was four. And then I got a challenge up, so that was five. So that was a lot of extra scrolls that I got in Hypey Castle. And that actually made me from underpowered to uh, pretty average. So that was nice. I, I probably do have the one because it was like last week. So I should be able to uh, get that footage.
Probably shouldn't have taken the uh, food right there in case there wasn't a light or something, but I was, fairly, I was pretty confident that I wasn't going to get hit. That was a little close right there, but it wasn't that big of a deal ultimately. And unfortunately, no, um, no good scrolls for me in this level. I almost went into a uh, clock tower right there. I actually missed the uh, lantern, so I almost started taking uh, damage from the darkness, and that go that damage racks up quick. And there was a little uh, altar with two weapons, and I could have gone and sold, but I didn't really feel like it. Because I wasn't going to use either one of those. And we're going to reforge the Sakura's bow at least one more time. Because I'm guaranteed to have something uh, that is a rare affix. So I want to see what I get here. And that's pretty much... Ex kind of not exactly what I wanted, but pretty close to what I wanted. So I was very, very happy with that. I saw the level 12 one because I get both burn and poison synergy, which, because I have now have poison on my Hukuro's bow. And I'm going to be changing up my mutations, so now open wounds, same as always, soldier resistance to beef up my health, and we're going to go instinct of the master of arms because uh, against bosses, crits are easy to come by. So now um, I should be able to uh, get quick cooldowns on my on my skills. I don't have any more need for the melee mutation. Plus it kind of works against you with bosses. So right away I'm doing a lot of damage. And I'm already getting the crit, so that's really nice. Dodge at the last second, and then that's the giant fight. Very quick. Uh, the crits were on point. It ex went exactly how I thought it was going to go. So very, very nice. And we're going to go straight to Hand of the King here. Because um, I'm going to be at 33 by the time I get there, and 33 is plenty. Especially with the amount of crits that I'll be getting. I was considering taking this one. Uh, really, I wouldn't. I would have only taken it if I got a few things. So if I got emits a toxic cloud, 100% to poison, 60% to bleed, and 30% to burn. It's the only way I would. I would have taken this. Yeah, and I didn't really get anything that I wanted, so I'm gonna go back to my original one. So I'll stay at 33 here. And luckily for me, balance blades are cheap, so if I wanted to go to uh, Astrolab and if I was able to purchase one, I would be able to afford it by the end. Because I'm at about 42,000 gold, so um, I should be able to get to 130 or so by the end of uh, Astrolab. Balance blades are cheap because uh, they're unlocked right from the start, I think. No, they're not, but they're really, really easy to unlock. All right, so I handed the king time, and um, this shouldn't be that bad. Um, I do have a good amount of health. Um, I'm not taking much damage at this point. And I do have the Hakuto's bow and other stuff. Now I'm starting to get crit. So right away, uh, we get the, um, 
we got him to go up and we should be able to finish it off pretty soon. And he dies right as he hits the ground. Per another perfect fight. Uh, Balance Blade is extremely good against bosses. Like, make no mistake, it is so good against bosses. No need for the Hokuto's bow because I have already have a really good one. So this shouldn't be that bad, uh, mostly because the Hakuto's bow should be able to take care of librarians and then the um, the defenders as well. It takes it out in one hit, so. If only I had the Hakuto's bow in Stoke Village. Or, well, I did, but if only the affixes actually worked. So that second one is the one that I'm going to be getting, uh, and like what I was talking about earlier, they're very cheap. So I only have about seventy thousand left, and I should be able, I should be able to get seventy thousand easily by selling uh, pretty much all the amulets and stuff like that. Very lucky that the bomber didn't try to like smash, smash, like do the down smash. And those two rubies are actually going to be what uh, helps me get that uh, balance blade, because that was about twenty thousand that I got right there just from those. I always say this, but we really need a curse in this level. That would be so cool. So I'll finally get the rolling right on this. I wasn't expecting that. I was a little unprepared, but um, at this point my skills were really good, so I was okay there. effect for the powerful grenade is really big like it killed that magistrate on that was on a completely different platform
Get the easy kill right there. But we're at 33, which is excellent right now. And we're at a lot of health too. And this is going to be our second elite. Get the easy kill. Uh, the juke move is a problem, but then if you have a fast weapon like this or high boost the gauntlets, then you should be able to get the kill no problem. I never go through this way. I never use those teleporters. I usually just go all the way down first, but I don't know why I did that there. And I'm actually going to wait uh, for my powerful grenade to cool down. And now I have enough to go buy that balance plate, so I'll be doing that after I clear the tower. Sense a little bit of a slowdown right there. And that one fell all the way down. So, yeah, not fun. That could have been a plus four. Probably not, given Miami luck throughout, but that would have been interesting to think of. I hope they fix that, uh, so amulets never drop off like that. That shouldn't be happening. Then again, what do I know? Very surprised that that didn't kill. Like, very, very surprised. And same with that. I think it's because he was on, like, the outskirts. Uh, the slammer was on the outskirts. So that's very possible. That quick bow would have been amazing in a different run, but didn't feel like doing it here. Yeah, we're just killing enemies very, very rapidly. The first couple hits are slow, but then after, or the damage is not great on the first couple hits, and then afterwards that's when it gets really good. And now we gotta go fight the bird, and then we can head on down to the shop by the balance blade, and then we can head into the observatory for the last battle. The timed up perfectly the uh what you call it the turret. Time all that perfectly. I'm get getting better at doing that. And I'm gonna pick up the kebab just so I can be at a little bit less malaise. And I'll technically be at full health. I'm gonna like 99.9% .9 health. And so the reason I pick up that balance plate is because it gives me poison, bleed, and burn. 
and that works out perfectly with all of my uh, weapons. Codus Bug gives me poison, the flame chart gives me the burn, and then the bleed comes from the open wounds. Alright, so last boss, I'm not really that concerned about getting hit, I don't really care, I shouldn't be taking too much damage from things, this is an attack 6 build, um, and that actually makes me feel better because I can just face tank things, but it's funny, on tactics I always get like in the high 30s and early 40s, um, with brutality I am, I never get above like 30, 34 or 35, like never, it's really weird, I don't know why that is. I jumped a little bit late right there. So I'm a little bit high on malaise. So I'm going to heal whenever I get the chance to. And I'm going to heal pretty much as we uh, go up. Get some important chip damage right there. Now we can get the final hit and then let the flame turret do all the work. And then get one last strike in, and then that is the run. Really, really fast. Very fun run. Had a blast with it. And Balance Blade is criminally underrated in my opinion. I think that there's so many good parts to it that its damage kind of overshadows how good it can be. And I'm, I did that. I did that to myself. In the tier list for 1.4, I put it in C rank. I think it should be A rank, honestly because of how amazing it is against bosses. Um, I'm going to leave a link to the build below. It'll be an imager link. Uh, I'm also going to leave my uh, social media on there. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitch. And feel free to like and subscribe. And thank you all for joining me. Have a great night, everybody.